Today we're flying China Airlines from Taipei to San Francisco. One big favor before we dive in is to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you like content like this. One of the benefits of flying business class is you can go lounge hopping. In our case, there are two China Airlines lounges, so let's go check them both out. The first lounge is in Terminal 1 and it reminds me of a basic priority pass lounge. It has nice calligraphy art on the walls and plenty of room. There's a buffet with Taiwanese items, beverages, and a made-to-order station. I ordered a bowl of beef noodles, which was pretty good. If you have more time, you can explore the Taipei Airport and visit the different themed gates. It can range from national parks, nature, gaming, or traditions. There's also duty-free shops where you can find a wide variety of whiskeys that are more reasonably priced as opposed to buying them in the US, if you can even find them. The second lounge is located in Terminal 2 and is more impressive when it comes to design. When you step into the lounge, you're greeted with a wood and stone-lined corridor. The lounge has sleeping rooms, lockers, showers, and a nursing room. Stepping into the lounge section, there's plenty of room and a buffet of food. I ordered a netter bowl of beef noodles and got some Chinese suit. One important note is that if you are flying out of Terminal 1, you'll need a special stamp from the first lounge to access the lounge in Terminal 2. They did check for the stamp and made photocopies of our boarding passes at the front desk. So the flight just took off and the first impressions of the business class suite is that it's very modern and pretty well designed. So I'm actually impressed. Let's take a quick tour. First off, we are on an A350-900. So magazine and document holder to my right. Up here is a little reading light. Tucked underneath here is going to be the diagonal seatbelt that's on. Oh, okay, they're passing out amenity kits now. Hey, thank you. Got the amenity kit. Let's dive in. The bag is by North Face, made for China Airlines. We have a comb, a pack of hand lotion, hand sanitizing gel, and lip balm, and it's by Sprecken House. The amenities are by Sprecken House Oslo. Hopefully I am pronouncing that correctly. Earplugs, sleeping mask. What is this? This is a new one. Haven't seen one in an amenity kit before. Okay, I figured out what this is for. It's to clip onto the side of the amenities bag and use it as a pouch. Very useful. And lastly, dental kit. Right in front, we have the entertainment screen along with the pull-out tray. And pull-out tray, you just, there's a lever on the bottom where you just pull it out. Make sure it clicks and you slide it forward. And then to close it, you do have to click the lever as well. One thing I really like is that there's a lot of storage space. So here is storage number one. And there are slippers and headsets. In the storage compartment, there is also outlets. So we have USB charging outlet and also where you plug in the headphones and a remote control for the entertainment system. Storage number two. I already put my phone and extra batteries here. There's also a really cute little light here, which adds a nice touch. Down here is more storage controls for the seat. One thing you'll notice is that there are not any privacy doors. So some other business class products do have like a Star Trek door. So you have your own little mini suite. So I can still see my neighbors. This is also an armrest and storage. This is, yeah, put an armrest here. And if it pops up, little water bottle. Pretty cool. In terms of leg room, plenty of space. The business cabin is a one-to-one -one configuration, so that means the middle seats are together. There's no middle partition that you can slide out and basically have more privacy, so that's interesting though. So we have the business class menu and I'm pretty excited. One really cool thing about the business class menu is that China Airlines teamed up with a three Michelin star chef in order to design the menu. I'm super excited to try this. You can choose from an Asian menu or a Western menu, and if you are a vegetarian, you can request a vegetarian menu as well. The vegetarian cuisine is made with a Michelin green star restaurant called Yang Ming Spring. So that can be ordered from flights departing from 
T-P-E-T-S-A-N-K-H-H. So the main course is red braised East Asia abalone, four heads of them, and lo mein. Breakfast will be served two hours and 30 minutes before landing, and there's also a choice of the Asian or Western menu. Asian menu is kanji, and it looks like the Western menu is oatmeal. The best part about international flights are the snacks that are in between the meals. This is pretty hilarious because in between snacks are actually all of Sebastian's favorite snacks that he would get anyways. So there's spicy fried chicken and sweet potato fries, a Wagyu beef burger, or Sky Lounge assorted snacks. And I think he's probably gonna get all of them. So for the pre-dinner service drink, I got some oolong tea. So on board, they do have the Johnny Walker Blue Label, and according to the Duty Free Catalog, the MSRP is $180. We also have the Caliban Classic Single Malt here, and it is MSRP is $77 for a bottle. The Troyo on board is $42, so the most expensive bottle on board is going to be $180 US dollars, which is the Johnny Walker Blue Label. Let's watch the movie. So the TV screen, is pretty good. Here is an iPhone 15 Pro for a comparison. Dinner is here. So this is the main entree, which is abalone and noodles, looks amazing. And these are all of the side dishes. Also comes with this little menu explaining what it is. So first off, we have the Sichuan style spicy radish. It's light and crunchy and not spicy at all. I guess there's like a little tingling, but it's not bad. Next up is pumpkin. I'm usually not a fan of pumpkin, so we'll see how this goes. It's cooked pretty well, really tender, has a nice bite to it. It's interesting. Next up is the lemon bitter gourd. I'm usually not a fan of bitter gourd either, so let's see how it tastes. I can confirm that I'm still not a fan of bitter gourd. This one's interesting because it's a cold dish. It's nice and refreshing, but bitter at the same time. I'm a fan of smoked eggs. Next up is the pork delicacies. There's also a little speckle of gold on here. It's basically pork jelly. Really savory, pretty good. Main course, let's try the broth. The broth is really good. It's light and savory and basically abalone mushroom broth. Noodles or egg noodles, tastes pretty good. The abalone is perfectly cooked, nice, tender, juicy, almost melts in your mouth. Definitely get this dish. Next up, we have the dessert section. So this is a sesame mung bean cake, and this one is stewed Asian pear with rock sugar. This one's actually one of my favorite desserts and it tastes even better in the sky. Okay, let's try the mung bean cake. It's black sesame in the middle. It's actually surprisingly good. I'm a fan of the desserts. Both are really good. Okay, it's time for a mid-flight snack, and I opted for the Wagyu beef burger, and Sebastian got the spicy fried chicken with sweet potato fries. Let's dive into this. It doesn't look bad. It actually looks like a real burger compared to other types of burgers that I've seen in Asia. It's also really close to breakfast time since we did get a lot of sleep in, which is a good thing. So hot towel right before breakfast. But we're trying the in-flight snacks just to review them for you. That is a surprisingly good burger in the sky. I'm impressed. Here's a toasted brioche bun and very flavorful patty along with some fresh veggies, some lettuce, tomato, and onion. And then if you want, you can add some oh that branded tomato ketchup. I didn't know he made ketchup. No, I'm just kidding. Overall, I think it's a solid choice, but let's try the chicken. Okay, so here is the spicy fried chicken with sweet potato fries plus beans. It's good 
flavors. It's not crispy enough and it's a little dry. This is a good Taiwanese snack. However, I think I prefer eating the burger. Try some beans. Let's try the sweet potato fries. The fries are soggy. This one's a skip for me. If it was crispier, right, so the flavors are there. I just wish it was like crispy, but we are on a plane, so I get it. Chicken's a bit underwhelming. My choice would be the burger. Okay, it's breakfast time and we have the Chinese set menu, which is the plain kanji with assorted toppings. How this works is there's an assortment of toppings here, which give the plain kanji a lot of flavor. These are seasoned green onions, I think. What is this? Oh, it's a green onion roll. I don't think I'm supposed to put the green onion roll in there. So we have steamed roll, braised pork, minced pork with pickled mustard greens, dried seaweed fish sauce, floss, and salty egg. So this is the cooked salty egg, basically a hard boiled salty egg. Oh, this is the green onion roll. It's basically plain white bread with the green onions rolled up in it. Seaweed pork boss is really salty on its own. So this definitely goes in here. <laughs> Mix all the toppings up. Kanji is on the thicker side, but it's not bad. One area of improvement is that I wish the salted egg was pre-peeled because I definitely made a mess. Also pretty inconvenient to peel a hard boiled egg on a plane. The salted egg goes inside the kanji. Overall, breakfast is okay, passable, but definitely enjoy dinner a lot more. Overall, I really enjoyed this flight and I would definitely book it again if it was available and we were traveling that route. The hard products itself is really modern and slick in design. And even though it doesn't have a privacy door, it's still not a bad product. I, I actually really love this design. For food, I would say the highlight is definitely the menu that was designed by the Three Michelin Star Chef. The in-flight snacks and breakfast were okay, and nothing really compares to that dinner meal. Service was amazing and attentive. The flight attendants were super friendly. China Airlines is a Sky Team partner, so there are a few ways to book this flight. We ended up transferring American Express points to Qantas and booking through China Airlines. The funny part is that even though we booked it through Qantas, we weren't able to select our seats through Qantas or China Airlines. So you actually have to go through Czech Airlines in order to choose your seat. It sounds bizarre, but it works. So here are some screenshots from when I logged in to Czech Airlines put in our confirmation number and I was able to select our seats. If you want to learn more about airline cards or flexible point cards, I'll leave a link in the description box down below. Using those links really supports this channel, so thank you in advance. And that wraps up the video. My question to you is, what are your thoughts on the China Airlines Business Class product? And would you try it or is it on your list to try in the future? Let me and the community know down in the comments below. If you made this far into the video, leave a whiskey emoji in the comments below and I'll try to respond and heart it. We are about to land now, so finally going back home to San Francisco. And we have quite a ridiculous schedule, so we're hopping on a flight after this, but that's for another video. See you in the next one.